Hello and welcome to another adventure on this planet Earth. This week we're going back to the United States, North Carolina, and we're going back in time about eight years to one of the most exciting, fantastic, incredible events of its kind anywhere on this planet Earth. Yeah, I'm gonna go right there. Okay, see you there in a few minutes. Yes, I've been reminiscing a bit about one of the crazier things I've done. This one I actually pulled off, but I'd like to encourage people to maybe try something like this themselves. It was great fun, and I think the community liked it. My favorite friend for working on these was Janice Young with the Chamber of Commerce. We were gonna buy some chalk, a lot of chalk and get some people together, a lot of people. And we would go out onto the streets and we would hand write the entire New Testament of the Bible. Yeah, just all at once. What Janice really liked was the idea of doing it on Easter and she wanted to combine it with a community sunrise service. Yeah, I had done something similar to this uh, about a decade before involving a giant roll of paper and the Declaration of Independence, but that's that's another story. Why chalk? Well, I have to thank Jeannie Linders. I helped her with a, a sidewalk chalk art festival. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's I'm I'm going right up there somewhere. <laughs> Well, the first big challenge that we had was getting approval from the city council. This is where it gets interesting, folks. So I went down to the PD and spoke with Officer Roby. This man did not like this idea, let me tell you. He brought up all kinds of reasons. One I remember was, you know, when the rains come and wash the chalk away, it's going to clog up the storm drains. I was going to have to get signatures from everyone who lived on any of those streets. So we did that. It was time to meet the city council. Well, that was an interesting night. Officer Obi stood up. He just ranted for a few minutes uh, about you know how horrible this was going to be, closing the streets. And I don't remember saying much of anything. The council just uh, kind of, it, it kind of looked like they were tripping over themselves to let this pass. And the mayor, Terry Mann, he pushed that thing right through. He was really in favor of it. I'm proud of him. Uh, Terry Mann, uh, Jewish, of course. One thing that really helped us out was when Michael Gordon of the Charlotte Observer wrote a column, a really nice column about it. And before we knew it, the News and Observer out of Raleigh was calling us up. Wilmington paper, some South Carolina papers, and then of course all the uh, TV networks, which I really, really liked because the only reason any of those newspapers or TV stations would come. Usually it would be if something bad was happening or something bad was about to happen. And so here they were coming to our little city and to spread the word that something really neat was about to happen. And yes, here I am. Made it up to the top. Yeah. I, uh, I was down there. So how did we really organize this mess? Oh. Basically, we let churches adopt books. We had ordered cases and cases of chalk. Kind of the, the first thing I did was, was inventory tile throughout downtown. Uh, I, I built this um, portable desk out of a hand cart and I uh, just went about it and I surveyed thousands of tiles of sidewalk. I figured this tile will hold 100 words, this one will hold 200. I got up well before sunrise, rode my bike downtown, and we, we had the stage set up, and there was a moment, such a beautiful moment. Right up until this happened, I had no idea if it'd work. And I stood there on the stage, and I could see people approaching, a dozen people, and then dozens of people. There were hundreds, hundreds of people showed up. Just a crowd emerged right in front of my eyes. The sunrise service was beautiful. I figure about a thousand people enjoyed the prayer, the songs, a little sermon. And then all of a sudden, 
it was my moment of reckoning. Well, I had prepared and prepared and prepared. I could have left town. There wasn't a whole lot for me to do. Everyone came up and gathered their packets and they left, did their work. It was that simple. Of course, the newspapers were there. All the TV stations were there, so that worked out great. It was just a, a perfect day. And it was kind of weird, very anticlimactic because we had this beautiful service and then everyone picked up packets and left. I rode around on my bike to admire things for a while and, and within a half an hour, an hour, everyone was gone. They, they just disappeared, went back to their church services. So why did I make this video? Am I, am I just bragging? Yeah. I think that other people could easily do projects like this. Maybe not to this extreme. Maybe just one book of the Bible each year or something, or, or even, it doesn't have to be the Bible. I've often thought that the folks in Hannibal, Missouri, for example, could hand write one of Mark Twain's books. It'd be great fun. So why do I do crazy things like this? Well, a little while ago, I came up with a saying that pretty much sums it up in a way. And that is, be somebody whom somebody can live without. Now, I'm not that somebody, not in any way. I've never married, I have no kids. There's no one on this planet Earth who says, I'm Mark Gilchrist, can't live without him. But maybe with little projects like this, uh, I could take a thousand people and, and in some small way kind of make their day. And uh, maybe the math will all work out. Well, thanks for hanging for another adventure. I'm Mark Gilchrist and I am and you are, we all are, on this planet Earth.